We're gonna start off with a middleweight contest, and I think this is gonna be the second event in a row where we say, wow, how did we get this fight to open up the main card, right? Nonetheless, we got the Joker. Number seventh ranked Jack Hermanson is facing off against number 10th ranked Edmund the Golden Boy Shabazi. And this is actually a really, really good fight, AJ. Like seeing this thing get matched up, um, I'm like, wow, this is crazy. But this is not as good of a, it's, a, it's like a good fight on paper. It's a good fight. Um, if you're just like a fan of these fighters, but if we're talking about matchups, I don't think this is a good fight at all for one of these fighters, AJ. So uh, let's start this thing off, man. Uh, this is my take on this, AJ. Let me set the table up really fast. We have a very experienced Jack Hermanson, Jack the Joker Hermanson, who has roughly about 27 fights in his career. This is an individual ranked number seven in the middleweight division right now. And if you look at his last five, he's fought Marvin Vittori, who's about to fight for a championship in his next fight, Kelvin Gastelum, big time middleweight player, Jared Cannonier, big time uh, middleweight player, Jacare Sousa, and David Branch. Just when I rattle off those names, you hear, oh, that's experience. That's like top level dudes, basically one through 15, something like that, right? Now, when we talk about uh, Edmund Shabazi, and he had a very, very fast rise that uh, saw a very, very abrupt halt when he ran into the buzzsaw, who is known as Derek Brunson, right? So lost to Derek Brunson. He got knocked out for the first time in his career, first loss of his career. Um, but he has a big win over Brad Tavares, Jack Marshman, who, you know, really has just been kind of padding people's records for you know the past couple of years uh charles bird that's that's big either charles burger or chris bird whatever his name is and then darren stewart so it's, that's big but it's a different caliber aj so i just wanted to start it off there give me your take on the experience differential between these two fighters because this is not the same caliber of fighter no yeah derek you're very correct it's especially like you said man jack hermanson he's been fighting killers for a very long time and at the top 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 of the heap i mean just look at that calvin gasselman who else taps calvin gasselman what like less than uh, less than a minute or some crazy stuff but even edwin shabazi man he's been fighting some killers but not to the level like you know you, you got the brad devaras you got the Derek brunson even charles bird it's a great win but it's not necessarily that top of the heap kind of opponent that's going to mix it up and the big the biggest difference is every fighter in the ufc is absolutely dangerous the difference is the top those top of the heap fighters are dangerous at every single aspect of the game so where you can get away with you know not the not the sharpest striking or not the sharpest ground game can't do that anymore when you're fa facing fighters like hermanson or any of the ones that he's been fighting you know you do that to marvin vittori and even if you get humped to the whole round you're still losing the fight so it's it's definitely levels to this game and the levels that hermanson has been fighting are definitely top of the heap whereas shabazian a little lower yeah i definitely agree with you there and i think that you made a very like uh, a succinct point when you just noted out like these top guys yeah they're balanced they're good everywhere right like they could strike well except Derek brunson right that striking is a little so-so but uh like you could strike very well but you can also wrestle you can also grapple very well and that's where i see this fight going man jack hermanson openly says he says listen my ground and pound is the best in the middleweight division nobody can touch my ground and pound and let's just recap what happened when Derek brunson fought uh, ed shabazian uh, edmund shabazian in their last fight what happened, man? So basically, Shabazian has all the luck on the feet, right? Like you got the big right hand coming over the top, man. This dude, he could really knock your lights out with one shot. But as soon as that thing got to the ground, it was game over. So this is Kevin Holland versus Derek Brunson. Kevin Holland versus Marvin Vittori, you know? And I've had to do a lot of reflecting, AJ. Um, just because I'm a big fan of Kevin Holland, I believe we both are, right? And just because I think he's a good prospect and whatnot. And I thought that the, these fighters like a Vittori and a Brunson should have beat them at a, at a more, you know, just kind of beat them more, if that makes sense. A more depth devastating right it wasn't devastating enough um a win is a win man and that's the thing is like you can't knock these dudes for just doing the boring thing and getting the win so if that's jack hermanson's approach which it probably will be because you know the man doesn't want to lose again i don't see this being the most exciting fight but i definitely see see this as like a if you're edmund shabazian what who's your manager you know what i'm saying like who's your camp like why did we sign up for this fight you know what i mean because the last thing you want to do is take a young prospect and then just start putting them on these losing streaks you know loss after loss after loss you're going to start putting them like losing confidence and things of that nature now let's just talk about instead of the downside let's talk about how this matchup is going to play out man what are the odds that Edmund Shabazian can keep this fight standing up on the feet for the majority of the fight this dude does have a 58 percent takedown defense not the best but it's something so give me your thoughts aj I mean, 58% takedown defense sounds nice, but I think the biggest problem that at least I noticed in uh, Shabazian's last fight against Eric Brunson, it wasn't the takedowns that were the biggest problems. It was that he couldn't handle Brunson's power. 
He literally felt Brunson hit him once, and that was it. Like he came back, he, he came back a little bit with a vengeance. I think it was either the first or the second, but he started to wither as the fight went on and just wasn't able to deal with what was in front of him. And that led to the takedown. That led to the ground and pound. It led, it led it was a start of the end once he felt Brunson's power. And I think that's gonna be the big key for Hermanson. Even if he's able to take him down, he has to be able to hurt Shabazzian in order to like demoralize him, take that will from him. Like like our homie uh, or you know, David Goggins says, you gotta take his soul. And if, if Hermanson can take Shabazian's soul by just keeping him on the ground, beating him up, it's going to be a long night. I really don't think Shabazian has much of an option here. You know what I'm saying? I think I think Shabazian has to do the kind of the the um, opposite effect and actually take down Hermanson. I think that's how it's going to be because if he wants to keep the standing, it's going to be a long night because we know Hermanson can do all of it. You know, he can fight on the ground, he can fight standing, but. If, if if Shabazzian wants to keep it standing, I think it's going to be about, I'd say, 60% chance that he's going to get, uh, it, it, that it's going to the ground. It's it's more likely than not that they're going to end up on the ground for the whole fight. What do you think, Derek? What's your percentage? Well, I think it's really interesting because Edmund Shabazzian, like one of the other things that I found from watching film studies that he doesn't fight well off of his back foot. You know, when you pressure him like Jack Romanson does, he has this very unorthodox kind of herky jerky type of style where he's just like uh, in your face, in your face, trying to throw big bombs at you and then grab you and then take you down right so he's trying to do that and if Edmund Shabazian isn't really that well fighting off his back foot like if that isn't something that he really worked on in this layoff since his last fight then I definitely see this being higher than 60 percent this is like 80 90 percent chance that he goes down to the ground because Edmund Shabazian that's his main path of victory man that right hand is locked and loaded at all times and if he clips you you're going to sleep or you're getting knocked down it is important that I, uh, I note that Edmund Shabazian has the second most knockdowns knockdown average per fight at like one and a half so I mean you know I mean that's numbers stats right but ultimately, if you're knocking somebody down every single time you fight, there's something that has to be said to there or something that has to be said there. Now, Edmund Shabazian is a uh, he's a Shotokan karate black belt. He has five wins in under one minute and 10 first round finishes. But like we said, AJ, we don't really got too much to talk about because Jack Hermanson, he has the third most strikes landed per minute at 185 pounds with uh, five significant strikes landed per minute. Uh, 10 first round finishes as well, man. So when you t get to that top of the heap, these guys are all good, man. Ultimately, um, I think that we don't really have too much to say here because uh, Jack Hermanson, uh, believe it or not, let me just actually put this lastly. Edmund Shabazian averages almost four and a half takedowns per fight. I don't know where it comes from. I'm, I'm really not sure. It's not really necessarily the style. It's the ground and pound. It's not necessarily the style. Um, but I'll just put it out there. Jack Hermanson has a 75% takedown defense. Ultimately, give me your pick, AJ. Who are you rolling with? Well, I, I really think this fight comes down to a lot to how each of their fight, uh, each of the fighters has responded to their uh, latest losses. Both of them have losses. Both of them have losses coming from wrestlers. So if they have worked on that aspect, it's going to be a lot of a, a lot more interesting, I think, than we're making it. Because I agree, Hermanson's looking to take it to the ground. Shabazzian's looking to keep it standing. You know, who, who, the powers that be will decide how that goes. But personally, I got Jack Hermanson with a KOTKO round three. I think it's going to be the same as Edmund Shabazzian's last fight. Long, dirty, ends up on the ground and pound beat up. Who you got? I'm going to go with Jack Hermanson here, but I think that this is really more of a, a prospect running into a buzzsaw again. Like to, to me, this is just poor matchmaking. This is someone's manager didn't really do their job, but I will say Edmund Shabazian has noted. He was like, I wanted this fight. Like, I'm not scared of this dude. I want this, but I just think that uh, Jack Hermanson, the Joker has too many weapons, man. The submission game is always there. And as soon as he gets you to the ground, he might heel hook you. He might just ground and pound your face off. If he gets your back flat on the ground in the first round, it's just going to be the beginning of the end right there. So Jack Hermanson, but I'm going to go uh, submission round two. I think that he gets him out of there via submission. But I will know Edmund Shabazzian has never been submitted in his career, so it would be impressive for him to do that. But nonetheless, AJ, let's go.